I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thanks for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our Microsoft Access playlist. We're going to talk about recursion and specifically how to do uh, recursion to do a family tree mapping or a part mapping or something like that. And this, uh, this video comes in response to a request from a viewer. Thank you very much for requesting this. This is a great topic. And what we're going to do is recursively show how to uh, traverse an entire tree, either on the father's side of the family or the mother's side of the family going up through, you know, generations uh, recursively. And without further ado, let's get to our recursion in Microsoft Access. Need help or uh, coaching on your project? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Okay, so to get started here, this is a file that we've used uh, several times. Um, and as you can see, I've built a family tree table here. And uh, this is what's called a self-join table. And so it has uh, children and parents uh, all in the same table. So, you know, this guy number 11, Harold Smith, his mother is uh, Mary O'Reilly here. Um, so she's a parent, and his dad is this other person, number eight. And uh, so this is a very common way that data is stored uh, when it's a hierarchy, a giant tree or something like that. And so a uh, family tree or, or, you know, family trees fit into this quite uh, readily. And so you can see uh, Timothy Smith, his dad is Harry Smith, and uh, Harry Smith's... Uh, uh, mom is is uh, Mary Harper, uh, who you know, and his dad was uh, James Smith. So they they're you know at the very top. And you can see those zeros. Zero is kind of like unknown in this case. So that's sort of where the tree or you know the the mapping ends. That's the very top. Uh, we don't know and you know who the parents of James Smith or Mary Harper were going back in time. Uh, and uh, if I choose another one, you can see we can go back through the mothers uh, strictly. Eleanor Johnson to Julie Ferguson to Clara Smith and then on to, you know, Mary Harper. Um, so you can, you can climb the tree all the way from any child and that's what uh, mapping does. Um, it allows you to sort of grab anybody. There's Harold Smith. Uh, his, you know, his dad was Timothy Smith and his dad was... Uh, Harry Smith and his dad was, was James Smith and that's sort of the essence of a self-joined table and that's what we're going to use today. Now I did create another table um, we're going to use near the end of our, our uh, procedure here uh, and it has some data and this is going to be output data because what we're going to do is we're going to run our function, our recursive function and as it loads it's going to it's going to generate its own output so that it's nice and easy to read and so that you can generate additional you know add additional data to it by joining you know to show you know other fields that you might have you know you could be have other fields like you know uh, second wife or, or third husband or whatever you know all those kind of extra details but we're not going to focus on that stuff today we're just going to show the output and what we're going to do is we're going to create a function and we're going to call it uh, parents or you can call it whatever you want and uh, I'm gonna have a list in it now this could be done many ways uh, the way that we, we do this I'm gonna do it simply using uh, a, a string called list you could do it you know passing arrays in and out and all kinds of other stuff but this is an easy way to understand it um, and so uh, a recursive function is is a function that is uh, that calls itself um, until it can't call itself anymore and then uh, and then it's and then it completes um, so make sure when you do a recursive function that you you know that it's something that will end <laughs> you know some calculation or or things like that I see people doing examples uh, with, with Fibonacci and things like that um, but uh, make sure that you don't uh, create one that will go on forever because it will actually go until it either errors out or it'll just keep churning on your box. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to recursively find all the parents by traversing the fathers or the mothers uh, IDs 
and uh, we're gonna need some some uh, tools for that. So we're gonna grab. Uh, I'm gonna make an an array list there. The AR list it's sort of undefined. It's gonna be a variant to start, which is a default data type. I'm gonna get the number of elements um, as a long. I'm gonna get the the last um, the last um, item in our in our array. So basically, the last parent um, will be you know uh, the long last there, and then I'm gonna use the uh, the variant for uh, variant for the return value. That's gonna be uh, for our D lookup. We're just gonna use a simple D lookup, which is nice and easy for our recursion. And then I'm gonna have a return string and an SQL string and uh, to start off, I'm going to set our return to the to the list of parents. So we're going to start with the child, the furthermost child that we're that we're requesting. So uh, we're going to pass in the ID as the list. Um, so that'll be you know number eleven, say. That'll be what we pass into our procedure, and then uh, it's going to go and find the next one up and add it to the list, um, and then it's going to go up and add. The next one, it'll find out what the next parent is and add that to the list, et cetera, et cetera. So each time that it goes around, what we're going to do is um, I'm just going to split my list because it's a, just a comma delimited list of IDs. So we're going to pass in number 11, which I think was Harry Smith or something like that. Um, uh, say number 11 or, or whatever number you want to start with. Um, and we're going to build the list um, from that and it's, we're going to split that into an array Then we'll get the number of elements in the array uh, which will be our our long elements there um, and then I'm going to get the last item in that array which is sort of like the last parent so I got so you start with the child and then last becomes like well what, what's that child's parent and then the next time around it goes you know uh, well, what's that child's parent, and what's that child's parent until you go all until there's no more parents, and then it stops and it outputs uh, whatever the list was. So my uh, return value, which could be a null if if DLOOKUP finds nothing, uh, it could be a null or it could have a, a value in it, and that's uh, how DLOOKUP DLOOKUP works. It's basically like, basically like doing a simple select statement with a single um, you know, a single where clause in it. Um, so we're going to put in the type, and the type is the, that's going to be the, the parent, we're going to say parent, uh, father ID or mother ID. Uh, so father ID or mother ID. And so it's going to look for that ID uh, depending on, you know, what we, what we ask for. And then using the ID of the person that we have, the, the last sort of, the top parent wherever we are in our recursion. So if our DLOOKUP returns a, a null, then it's going to stop. It's not going to keep adding to the list. And that's very important that you make sure that you know where your recursion ends uh, because, or you know that it will end um, or it won't be too big, for example, or it'll just go forever. Um, and that'll usually end up as, a, as an error uh, you'll get like a overflow error or something like that. And so if our DLOOKUP finds a value, so there is a parent, so if we're using say father IDs, so we look at the current, you know, um, child and, and it says, it says, yes, I found a parent for that child, then we're going to add that to our list and, uh, and we can, you know, get our our list of uh, our recursive list of, of father IDs or mother IDs if you're using the mother option. So that's where the, the variant comes in. It could be uh, could end up being a null if there's nothing, uh, but uh, it it will return a value if it has a value. And if it does have a value, that's when we're going to return to our uh, our return string. And we're going to add a comma and a and the the value onto the end of it. I'm going to increment our our counter, which we're going to use later, um, just so that we know how many recursions we went through, but also we know the order of our output. 
uh, even though it will be created in order in the string that we're making, uh, when we you know, kick this out into a record set, we need to make sure that we show the order uh, from top to bottom uh, of, our, of the things that we have. So uh, then we call our return string, it will be parents. You see I, I use the same function, so it's calling itself, and we're going to pass in whatever we've already got, plus the type and count. And then at the very end, we're going to just return the, the new value of our return string, uh, or of the parent, parent's function, I should say, because we're calling, we're calling the function over and over again. So what that's going to do is um, it's going to start with the first item. Then if there's the parent, then it adds that to the list. And then if there's a parent of that, it adds it to the list, et cetera, et cetera, until it outputs it. Um, so if I go back here and I look and I try to grab one of these, um, uh, I guess I could grab uh, number 11 here. Uh, he's got, you know, uh, three or four uh, generations. So uh, if I chose fathers, I would get eight and then five, uh, yeah, 11, eight, then five, then, then one. So it should go 11, eight, five, one. <laughs> if you want to find the... Uh, uh, if you want to find the recursive map there. And so to call our function, uh, what we can do is uh, I can just say, well, what is what is parents for 11, which is the child that we want to get the map for. And I'm going to use the father ID. I want to see the map all the way up using father ID. And I want to increment it starting at 1. And if I hit enter, uh, there we go. Okay, so yeah, it, it uh, said 11, 8, 5, 1. And then it stops at zero, which is our unknown. Um, that's our last one. And then uh, that's sort of where it ends. And so that's sort of how you can do a recursive function. You can, you can traverse a tree without using a loop. Because loops get very, uh, they actually get kind of unwieldy uh, that you can do trees using the loop. Uh, but when, when you really get down to it, um, it's much more efficient to to be able to use recursion uh, than using a loop uh, for self-joined tables. Uh, I used loops a lot of times on them. I've used recursion a lot of times. Uh, it really depends on, on the circumstance, but um, generally recursion will be uh, more efficient and it'll be easier to write and understand. So there, uh, we'll traverse the mother's tree uh, starting with 16 and uh, and you can see it went 16, 14, 4, 2 uh, all the way up to the top um, naming the mothers and this uh, method works if there's multiple you know there's two two wives in a row or three husbands it doesn't really matter because the children are mapped to the appropriate parents so we don't really care who's married to who it's really uh, more of a uh, genetic genetic mapping, I guess you'd say, or you know, just a biological mapping. You can choose any child in the tree, um, so you can start way close to the end and just see who their parents were. So if I chose number four, I can see well, it's just four and then one and then unknown, um, and that's uh, so that means that you can run this procedure and you can output all kinds of stuff um, and you can build you know, sort of like maps and you can join other information into it to make it more interesting and things like that. So in order to do that, uh, what we want to do is now that we've got our, you know, our map coming out correctly, we know that it recursively is finding all the things that we want. We want to actually output each, you know, as we go through our recursion, it's nice to put that into a little temporary table which I called family output and so that we can insert each time the rec you know the recursive function is called before it ends um, and it'll you know while it's you know determining what's where you know who's who it will write the output into a table which makes it sort of more useful for us um, as we go and also make note that we have not used a single uh, loop in our programming. Um, so this is all uh, coming from a single function, uh, which is a nice uh, sort of nice way of programming it. And uh, we can do extra activities inside of the function, which is kind of what we're doing now. 
um, and where we're actually going to, each time that it's called, we're going to write to that table so that we can see when, when the function's completed running, we can see what the tree looks like. So I just created a, a dynamic SQL there, very simple one uh, with the ID and everything to do an insert statement. And then I just said uh, current db.execute. And that's going to just, you know, plunk that into a table. Uh, our, as you can see, it was 118510 for the bottom one there. If we did that same one, um, then it's going to put those records into that temporary table so that we can look at it and join in other things like the mothers for each of those generations and things like that. Um, you can join those in and show those separately. But if, if we run it, now you can see there's our, our tree. Now note that it is backwards uh, because uh, we're starting at the, the child. And so you would probably order this uh, in reverse order when you query it because James Smith is actually at the top. So you could sort from uh, largest to smallest if you wanted to see it in order. You can use the ID to join in the mother's family for each of those generations or vice versa. If you looked up all the mothers going back in time, you could join in the father's information. And by join in, I mean uh, create another query uh, that will have the family output table as one of the tables in the query uh, so that you can join in other family information and things uh, according to the map that you just ran and wanted to look at. And so that is how you can use recursive functions to do family trees in Access. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to do recursion uh, functions in Microsoft Access. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and uh, click the bell when you see the bell. And if you have any questions or comments, put those in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.